Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Boris. Boris is from Germany. So let's see what Boris has to say. Enjoy the interview. So hello Boris, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Very well. Thanks so much for taking the time today for the interview. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate this. So you, you went to my live on TikTok and then you saw me and you thought, let's make an interview. Yes, I was checking. I was checking your, I was checking your um, TikTok. I could see you still live. Okay. So, tell me, so tell me, how's your day going so far? Oh, my day is going so far as, as much good as possible. I have the on-phone call job. I'm a TV journalist and I'm responsible I'm responsible for breaking news and actual news on, on weekend time. So yesterday we were reporting about uh, uh, a German uh, parliamentary issue, uh, very important with the right wing parties who has the most voters in the parliament and so on. We live broadcasted for hours and then we had this breaking news from Lebanon that the Israel killed the Hezbollah chief and so on. It was a long day. Then uh, I also have my daughter and she don't likes to join my TV studio. So I bring her to her friend and now they are in the park and going for a swim. And now I'm I'm happy that she is happy to be uh, involved in something special she likes. And this gives me the chance to be free for this interview here right now. Amazing. Okay, so let's start the interview talking about your career as a journalist. So tell me how everything started. So when I was young, I was thinking about what to do and I was working for school newspapers and so on and so on. And I was kind of addicted to news. I don't know why, but it happens. And we have one of our main news show here in ZDF Public TV. It's called Heute Journal. And I always thought I will work someday somehow over there. And then I decided uh, being uh, an actor and I tried to find some um, actor trainers, but my dad said it makes no sense. It's not so it's too much expensive and so on and so on. And then after finishing school, I was thinking, oh, Boris, I don't know what to do. And then I said, let's apply for some uh, journalist schools. And then I did. I was 18 years young. And you have to make big uh, testing reports and interviews and so on. It's not a one-to-one -one day issue, uh, making an application like this. And then from all schools, they, they quit me. They don't want to have me. And then I decided to study economics or making um, application for working in a bank. But they always don't want to have me because I, I'm not good in mathematics. <laughs> and then... Um, I told, I, I spoke with this journalist organiz organization all day long, every day, and they told me, you are on waiting place number one. Wow. So if someone says, I don't come, then you can replace. So I was every day calling these guys. <laughs> and two weeks before starting the education, I got, I received a call from the journalism authorities in Berlin. I grew up in Berlin. And then they said, so, Boris, are you ready? I said, ready for what? Yeah, you could join. There is a place free. At the end, I find out the school class, they're looking for 15 students. But this year before, one student getting sick. So wow. they decided to take him the next year, not 15, 16. And from this 16, one guy said, oh, I, I do something else. And then they were thinking about, should we call Boris or should we continue with the 15? <laughs> so I jumped in and this was the beginning of my career. And as far as I told before, I wanted to work in the Heute Journal. Finally, I worked eight years in the Heute Journal. So I fulfilled my dream and I had... Um, he is still alive. He is around at the end of 80, 90. He was, I call him my journalism daddy. He was telling me, Boris, if you want to be a journalist, you are going through different processes. 
and the first you are right now you are happy yes i'm a great guy i will change the world second process when you are around 30 you're still thinking i have the best job on earth and i have still the chance the chance to change the world and if you arrive the 40s nearly 50s i'm in the middle of my 50s i'm 57 right now sometimes i'm thinking i'm 20 because it's it's felt like it was yesterday he said you will come up to this thoughts in my next life i'm doing something different there are more important things and this is an experience you only can get if you are getting older and now I'm a matured man, more than matured, and um, I have to survive the next 10 years. And then I'm doing this, what I always wanted to do, to make my stories with my perspective, with my personal view. I, I did as far as possible, and it's always a challenge and the fight to, to bring your stories you want to produce to your chiefs, and they agree in this. And yes, um, and since I'm doing my, my journalism on TikTok, like I want to do, it's still also a filter bubble. Yes, it's also a filter bubble. I, ha I found fun back to my job, and that's what I like. But I'm not paid for this. I do it with my, in my free time. Amazing. Wow, what a beautiful career. I love the way that, you know, somehow it came to you and somehow you embraced, you meant to be a journalist. I think that it was written in your life story, the way it, it starts. I love it. So, Boris, tell me where you're from. I'm from Germany. I was born in Hamburg. When I was three years old, my parents uh, joined with me to Berlin. I grew up in Berlin, in West Berlin, mm -hmm. before unification. I lived... Uh, up to 1988 in Berlin. So that was the time starting with the falling of the wall. Before the wall was falling, I went to Munich to a journalism school. I stood 12 years in uh, Munich. I was working for different magazines, sport magazines, fashion magazines, nothing special. Then I went to radio. And finally, this is a very nice story. Um, it was a misunderstanding that I went to TV. So on journalism school, we had two teachers from the first and second public program. And the guy from the first public program told me, Boris, if you're making your in internship in Bavarian broadcast station and you like to go to TV, just give me a ring, I will bring you. So let me say it was six, seven years later I remembered this guy, I called him, but I was not getting him on phone in the first program. He was on the second program in ZDF. And I told him, hey, I don't know if you remember me, Boris, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes, yes. So you told me if I want to go to television, I, I should give you a ring. Then he was saying, hmm, I do not remember this, but if I told you, I will fulfill my word. You could start. This was in 1994. In the year of 2000, I was nominated for a docu documentation award in Berlin, uh, a documentation award about for, for young journalists. So, and the most 10 best were invited to this company. And in a break, we were sitting in a big bookshop in the, on the 18th floor with a good view to Berlin, to the skyscrapers of Berlin. And there was one guy sitting beside me. I'm thinking, Boris, from where you have, from where you know him. So every candidate has his chief on at your side. Right. And then I said, oh, my goodness, this is the guy from the first program who told me if I want to go television, I should call him. And I was saying, hey, sorry, sir, are you this man? Blah, 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 blah. Yes. So I, I, I'm very grateful and that you made the foundation uh, or the fundament of my total career. And he said, why? Because you were that guy who wanted me to introduce you to, to, to your TV station. And it was a misunderstanding. I phoned the other guy we had on school. 
<laughs> and that's the reason I went to ZDF. Oh and, my god! That's and amazing. then I'm and then I made my way during different studios here and there, and now I'm living in in Bonn. Amazing. And, uh, I'm working for a TV station is related uh, to our both big main uh, public channels and yeah. we are we are making parliamentary TV and news and documentation and in that case I'm working as a kind of editor in chief uh, to lead the show to fill with content to plan everything and yeah that's it what I'm doing so it means that uh, Wheel in the Magic Box is going to you're going to do like a, a little clip about the show to show on your TV. <laughs> I'm yeah. Joking. <laughs> I'm joking. You can I would, do an interview. I, I, when, it, you, when your interview goes live, you can promote your interview on the channel. Imagine how amazing the whole yeah, German. Yeah. <laughs> Boris, so during the, the interview, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your life and also yeah. about your point of views, okay? Yeah. Are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and share your point of views? Yes. Amazing. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So I have here my best friend. Of wonderful questions, okay? I'm just going to play a song now just for us to relax before the first question, okay? Okay. Let's do it. Right, so before we start the interview, during the join, if it comes up a question that you don't want to talk about, you don't want to answer, always can change, okay? Yeah. Perfect. First question for you is, what's the best compliment have you ever received? Oh, <laughs> the best compliment, let me think about. Yes, I, I, I remember something i never expected in my life when i was a longer time ago single and 20 30 years younger like now i remember there were one lady i was hunting and she was saying later on boris do you know what i liked on you the way you walk i said what <laughs> the way i walk <laughs> i never put my mind to this and I remember this always. And when I came back into those situation, hunting someone, kind of, I'm just kidding. Then I said, Boris, pay attention to your work. Maybe it impresses her. <laughs> Amazing. And saying that, when you think about yourself, when you analyze yourself, what's the biggest joy of being Boris? What do you like the most about being you? Oh, this question is not hard to answer, but it seems to be a long answer. So the biggest issue in my life was that I baptized myself two years ago, a second time in my life. Mm -hmm. And I believe in this, that everything has to happen what happened in life. This is not all, all only a believer issue. I think there are some more things in the universe we could believe in. And if you have a um, mindset for this and you are opening your eyes and you're opening your ears and paying attention to something more than you did before, then I call it always magic moments. Things happen, you're saying, this is unbelievable that this happens right now in this second. Do you know I was calling and then he coming around and blah. No, wow. If you experience this one time, yeah, you said it happens. Second time, I have those magic moments every day small magic moments and if you put bring all mosaic stones together it creates a picture and this picture is my life and now i understood my life all process i have to work going through uh, good and bad things yeah. and this made me and now with that life experience i have I'm a little bit more relaxed than before. Before I was, I have to do this, this, I, this goal, and here and blow. It's the same if you are praying to the Lord, and you're telling your problems, and when you're finishing the prayers, you start looking for solutions by yourself, and that is what I've learned was learning. Let the Lord work; He will do His job when He knows it's the right time. Be patient. That bring me to the point, if a problem pops up, if something begins, there is always an end. 
So, and this is what, what is fascinating me with all those African people I know. They could suffer as much as they are able to. They handle problems different than we do here. And I try to do this also. I have also my issues. Of course. I let, I, I let them go in the flow. I know there will be an end. Don't make your too much minds of energy and so on. And this is one of my most important experience. And I'm happy to be matured like I'm right now to be able to understand this. And then, you, and then you can, could enjoy this rest totally, of your life. I totally agree with you. I'm, I'm originally from Brazil. I'm in, in back in Brazil growing up. When I look back, I've been in Europe uh, for uh, almost 20 years now. When I, when I look back, I think, um, you know, um, we see problems in a different way. Yeah, totally. I remember when I arrived in Europe, I was living in Portugal before and up in London. And, and here I remember people complaining or moaning about things. I was like, my God, that's for me never been a problem back in Brazil. So it's just a different way of approaching life. And I understand your point. I think whatever you believe, you know, everything is going to come in the right time. Things going to happen. But you need to do the work as well. You need yeah. to go for it. You need to believe it. And you need to do something about it. Not. Yes. I think everything needs to work together for things to happen. That's how I believe as well. Yeah. Maybe. Next question, let's do it. Hey, Boris from Germany. Next question is, what things do you consider to be relationship deal breakers? Yes, I can answer in the pr perspective of Miles Monroe. I don't know if you know Miles Monroe, he, is an Heve he was an Hevean pastor. And he was a relationship course coach and he was always telling about what you need for a good relationship and what separates a relationship. And he was saying, if you fall in love, never marry because it's a biological process. And he was telling, um, he used a picture, if you want to produce a, a cake, you have a recipe book and you, ha you have the ingredients for the cake. And if you put all in a row, like it's written down, then you will get this picture when you take out your cake out of the oven. And that's the same with relationship. Everyone has a picture about a good relationship, but they do not know the ingredients. So he was saying, if you want to marry someday someone, you have to know how the other female or male is working, thinking, invest $40 for four books and make your investigation. And then the most important thing for making a good cake or a picture of a good relation, you also have to have a spiritual relation. So everything oh. else is something, hormones, nature issue, blah, blah, blah. And the man has to have a vision and the lady has to agree in this vision. And if you come back to the Bible, to the Garden Eden and Adam and Eve, and you know all that, how God creates the world and which tools he gave whom, and that Eve is a ribbon from, from, from Adam and so on, she is a supporter. If you're going in front of a, of a relation kind of this mindset, I believe in this, this told by my, my Kenyan pastor introduced me to this guy. And I said, oh, my goodness, why I do not know this 30 years earlier. But now <laughs> the windows are open for this and I'm looking for this. This only one right person. And if the Lord's will is to be single for the rest of my life, then it will make sense. And I will know what does that mean someday. Wow. And let's see if this if this person is watching this interview right now. Let's see. What is someone wanna gonna date with you, a lady? What this lady must have? What's the main thing, in your opinion, that gets your your eyes or your you know, um, let's see, your um, intention or your desire to go on a date with this person? Yeah, interesting question that I'm asking myself every day. I think the most important thing is seriousness. Okay. And and that the person is honest. I met tons of bad experiences, yep. especially with uh, ladies from different cultures. So the expectations out of those cultures are different. The goals are different. And the only thing you can 
watch is you can only watch to the forehead but not into the minds of those people and if it comes up to that i that something is triggering me or oh, could you pay my nails or my wig or whatever or can you send me some money for data oh no this this is not what i'm looking for and then you find out someday 90 percent 95 percent of all people you kind of meeting somewhere are the same so i'm I, it, since i'm out of this pressure to be in relation i'm more relaxed -er and pay attention to the main issues of life for sure i have a lady here but if she might be the right one only the lord knows and he will let it happen Absolutely. so i'm not expecting anything and I'm, um, my motto is sit and wait and trust the way of the Lord. Absolutely. The right person will come in the right time. That's how I see as well. Yes. <laughs> Ready for another question? Ready? Yes. I have three questions left. Okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Before the next question, um, um, Boris, sorry. Before the next question, tell me um, briefly, yeah, what's the biggest joy of being a journalist? And also, what's the biggest challenge through your career that, um, you know, looking back, what has been the biggest challenge for you? Um, I still like that I have always the possibility to get in contact with people I'm not able to contact, get in contact when I'm not a journalist. So it's a kind of special situation that you are allowed to enter to the world of VIPs or politicians or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and they know they have to pay attention to you. And in that case, I always have a chance, this is my private thought, to influence them with my personal perspective. So it's like this, whatever you wanted to ask this person in your life, I can do, and this I it's I'm I'm grateful for this. I love that. Yeah. And the most challenging part. Ah, the most challenging part. So the most challenging part is that in my job, not people are working together; they are working to each other because everyone wants to have the most breaking news story you want to be the first on the ground and whatever and whatever and whatever and sometimes it's a little bit unfair people treating each other in that case and even if you're working for the same uh, tv station it makes definitely no sense we have to work on the same goal and it doesn't matter who is the first the main issue is that you got the story and we have to working for for uh, together and this is this is still a challenge there are tons of more better all knowers about whatever and this is there is no need for so i've got i've got good news for you yes I have already so many people from, uh, I've got over a thousand people already here on the show around the globe, yeah, who participate on the show. A lot of people from Germany, but you are my first uh, journalist from Germany who participate in the Magic Box. So there okay. you go. Okay, thank the you program. very much. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is, if you had only 24 hours of life, what would you do? Ooh. I will join this time with my daughter nice. and let her do whatever she wants to. Saying that, what's the biggest joy of being a dad? I could cry if you're asking me this question. Oh. It's, it's a holy present. So my child grew up, we are divorced. And my child is living one week in her mother's house and one week in my house. I'm a divorced child also. And I was telling me all day long, if I'm getting a daddy someday, my kids should do not experience this and it happens. So my pastor was saying, if you have uh, issues in your family tree coming back and back and back, you have to make a breakthrough. 
and on a spiritual level i'm working on that so i maybe i'm in before my breaking through i'm working on that and also for this you have to be patient and then i ha i hope that my daughter when i'm not anymore alive will have a better way without having to have a breakthrough because it's it was broken this is my last task of my life to make the way free for my daughter oh sweet answer very sweet boris okay um let's see that your daughter is watching this interview right now and you have a moment an opportunity to send her a message to say anything what would you say darling i'm always there for you always sweet very sweet Two questions left. Let's do it. Yes. Hey, Boris. Next question is, what is the funniest or the most memorable gift have ever received? Yeah, it, it, it sounds a kind of pseudo-romantic, but the biggest gift in my life was my daughter. Wow. Yeah. And... So far, what's the most meaningful lesson you've learned from her? Yes, I'm telling you the story. It's not a long time ago. We were on a rugby tournament here in my city. And we were passing a rugby field. Young boys were playing a game. And I told to my daughter, Carla, look, this guy is not bad. And then she was looking for me and saying that, Daddy, why you are saying this? You could say also, look, he is good. Why you are saying he's bad? Wow. So lesson, lesson learns. <laughs> wow, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you we learn a lot, a lot with our children, you know, with younger or older people. Once yeah. somebody said to me once, when you feel down, when you feel, uh, you know, melancholic for any reason, sit down with like a three years old or four years old kids or with a eight years old or 90 years old elderly person trust me you're gonna learn something and you're gonna yes. feel a better person yes the minds of those kids are clean without totally. any dirt there yeah. is no bad semen in their soul because no. they come clean to this earth absolutely and and the only one who are influencing those same in, in the minds of our kids are the adults. And you have to pay attention not only to your own spirit, to the spirit of your daughter or son. Yeah. To be totally. well connected with the Holy Spirit. And then if you're doing this, all is good. Amazing. Ready for the last question? Yes. Let's do it. Last question. How do I say last question in German? Uh, the letzte Frage. The letters the fog. Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> but before the last question, uh, Boris, tell me what has been the highlight of your career so far as a journalist? Tell me something that you're never going to forget, something that's always going to have a special place in your heart, if you can share. There are tons of moments like this. I remember one documentation I made a long time ago in Pakistan after a big earthquake. And we were shooting uh, in summertime. We found out a family and we wanted to visit the family again in wintertime. But we didn't find the family and the neighbors told us maybe go to the valley in the refugees camp. They are over there and whatever. So we found the mother with her mother in a tent, it was minus 20 degrees. And she was saying, we came out of the mountains here. And when we went to this tent, I bring my baby on earth. But mm -hmm. next day it died because of coldness. Oh my God. And she, and she was crying and her water was running out of her eyes. And I told the cameraman, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. You can sort out the pictures later when you are cutting. And when we get out of the tent, he, her man, her husband was coming back from work and he rang the stone for the grave of this child. And we shoot at this. And every time I, I could cry right now, if I'm bringing this back to my mind, this was one of my most emotional situations when I was shooting 
some human issues somewhere on this planet and this is part of my life and since well, then i'm appreciate every day i'm waking up again and have the chance to have a new day in my life oh wow what a story my god i've got here goosebumps i'm getting emotional as well i think those moments in life you know um I think if all of us, we if, if you if you would write down every day what we have, we would never complain about anything in the world because we have so much and sometimes we forget it, you know. And sometimes life brings us those events like it happened to you, just for you to understand how grateful um, the power of being grateful is just beautiful and strong as well because. Um, you know, we have a lot and sometimes we forget. And, um, you know, there are so many people out there that they don't even have the opportunity to be themselves or to have a better life or to, to you know, to have a meal every day as we do. Yes. So I'm glad that you, you, you shared that because we need to be grateful every day because, you know, just the fact we are here, that fact we are able to express the way we are, doing our job, things that we love to do, I think that's um, something to be grateful for. Thanks for sharing, Boris. Thank you. I appreciate the attendance here. Thank you very much, William. Last question is, what does money mean to you? It comes and it goes. Do you believe that money can bring happiness? No. Why is that? Because it's something to change. So the, my, my life experience is to focus on yourself, on what is happening around you. And if you are still focused on career and making money, if you if you get money, you can lose money. If you do not have money, no one can steal your money. The main thing is to make your good life by yourself. This is your responsibility to your soul, to your brain, to your body and whatever. Money is just a tool to survive and sometimes we have more sometimes we have less and that's the way how it is so if a problem pops up it will end someday it's the same with money you have money you lose money so this is normal don't pay too much atten uh, um, attention to this and focus on your personal life goals beautiful okay it's not the end yet so let's play now the word association game okay i'm going to give away some words in just a one word that comes to your mind quick thinking okay yeah one word for money relaxed family happiness fear happens life life yeah it's I'm curious. Okay. One word for love. Trust. Religion. Best on earth. One word for sex. Wow. <laughs> I like the way you said, wow. <laughs> Politics. A big issue. Friendship. If you have, it's good. If not, it's sometimes better. Desire. It's wow. The truth. I'm, joking. I'm joking. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Desire. Yeah, it's a kind of truth. Okay. Regret. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Forgive yourself. Okay. Wish. Dreams. Success. Favor. One word for happiness. Family. One word for Hamburg. The place I want to be go into my grave. I've been there twice, actually. I've been yeah. in Hamburg twice. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. One word for Berlin. Oh, one word for Berlin is, yeah, my, 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 my second hometown. Okay. One word for Germany. I want to leave someday. Hmm. And the last one now, one word for journalist. One word for journalist. 
is oh that's a good question in one word journalist try it again and again beautiful okay so let's pretend now i'm going to meet your daughter for a coffee and i'm going mm -hmm. to ask her define your dad boris in one positive word and one negative word only what should say <laughs> I can't say exactly. Uh, she 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 made school a kind of emotional watch. You can put on your emotional right now and expecting what you, emotion you want to have. And she does it for herself and for me. And in the beginning of that day, I'm looking to this watch and she put it always to daddy. He is stressy. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh, Dad, you are always stressed, so be calm down. Yes, darling, but if we have an issue and we have to be just in time, I'm saying do this, this, and this. There is always a sense behind. If, if you don't do, then I have to make my voice a little bit louder. And this is not stressing. I'm leading you. But she rejects this from me as stress. And this is going to my mind, and I have to think about <laughs> And one, one word positive, what should say about you? Um, he's always there for me. Oh, sweet. Okay, let's play now Boris and the Magic Box, and you can ask me a question. But before you ask me the question, Boris, tell me what's your favorite German word? My famous... Favorite, favorite. Yeah, I, 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 it's not a word. I, I, I saw it on TikTok, someone from Africa, American Africa lady was talking about her experience of German language. And she was saying, the Germans are saying always, <laughs> Is she right? She is definitely right. So it expresses something special without saying any word. <laughs> is unbelievable that could be not possible what and just ha yeah this is my favorite word oh my god you put this in my head now when i'm going to german when i'm going to talk to german friends i'm going to wait for this sound <laughs> <laughs> okay boris you can ask me a question now yeah you choose me out to your interview what do you think who i am why does it choose you because I knew that during the interview, you would get emotional about your life story. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, um, Boris, back to your question. Um, I think, you know, through the interview, I could see, you know, how it's being spiritual for you, you know, the, the, your beliefs to God, your connection with God, your connection with religion, and you're trying here to as everyone else become a better person, more understanding. And what I believe is, uh, you know, People, they're going to cross your life for one reason or another. I I strongly believe that we meant to have this interview today. You have no idea talking to you how much I've learned. My God, you got me emotional talk, sharing this beautiful story. Not beautiful, but this story back, you know, in your, in your career as a journalist. And, you know, talking to you and, I, I you know, seeing your your enthusiastic talking about your career, you know, in a positive and negative way, I think it's amazing. So... You know, it, it's interesting because we got connected today. You know, usually yes. when when I invite people, we do the interview like in three days time or next week or next month or depending. And, uh, you know, you're very approachable. And as soon as I, con I you know, I contact you, you're very uh, approachable. And somehow we are here. We just made memories now. And I think that's yes. the that's the, the whole part of life. For you to, the power of saying yes can take you in a place that you never expect. So that's what I believe. And I, I just literally uh, invite random people around the globe. If they say yes, good. If they say no, good. It does, yeah. didn't meant to be. Yeah. So I think that, uh, you know, I believe that everyone has a story to tell. Everyone has, there's something interesting about themselves that, you know, sometimes it's great. Imagine people now watch this interview and they're going to somehow connect with you because your career, because your emotions or because you, the way you express yourself maybe a date you never know maybe your next uh, your next relationship must be watch this interview right now you never know 
So what I believe is, you know, um, everything happens for a reason. People, they, they, they connect with other people as well. And I just think that so we meant to have this interview today. And I'm glad that you accepted my invitation. I'm glad that we had this conversation now because somehow you left your signature here in the magic box. So thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for being so kind and sweet and uh, to accept my invitation. Did you enjoy the interview? Yes, please. I appreciate. Thank you very much for giving me this time to, to have this talk with you. Thank I you was mean. not expecting something like this, and you are always right. Things have to happen, and we will see later for what it is good. Totally, totally. The power of saying yes can take you in a place that you never expected. Yeah. But before you go, Boris, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by. Yes. You were asking me before to make my mind about a special quote. And this quote I'm doing always when I'm doing my videos on TikTok or on my life. I was, I, I, I'm saying always my wish is that you treat all people like you expected to be treated from then. And if we are all on this planet doing this, we have a better world. And I'm spreading this out every minute, every possibility I have. Also like here right now. And this is this quote, what I mean. Amazing, beautiful. And uh, we keep in touch. Okay, yes. so it was Thank a pleasure you. to have you on the show. Regards to your daughter, to your friends, yeah. and keep in touch, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Hasta luego. Bye-bye. Ciao. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.